it's okay. It's absolutely okay that each and every one in this room just knew I was a math nerd when you first saw me. That's okay. We all have our biases, especially when it comes to women. I mean, body count, dress, heels, blonde hair, it's just so stereotypical. It's just impossible not to put me into this eager beaver drawer. Hmm? When I was a first semester chemistry student at the university, we had a math professor who would ask students out uh, to do calculations on the chalkboard in front of the class. And it was still in the beginning of the semester and I really was a math nerd. So it was a fairly easy exercise for me. Had I been a pimply nerd, he might have, I don't know, nodded or shrieked in unexcited appreciation. But it was me, an 18 year old, uh, tank top blondie doing a calculation on a chalkboard. So he was totally thrilled because I exceeded his very, very low expectations. It was around that time when really friendly, benevolent people gave me the well-meant advice that I should rethink my styling. They thought I was smart and that I had what it took for a respectable career maybe if it wasn't for my looks. Um, they told me I should dress less feminine, definitely not sexy, tie up my hair, maybe even think about becoming a brunette. Otherwise, I would never be taken seriously anywhere. I mean, I was a woman after all, right? And they told me being a woman is really an, a disadvantage, but being overly feminine is career suicide no matter where you go. Bad thing about it was it, it wouldn't have been me anymore in the end. So we seem to have this very, very strong urge to connect features that are totally unrelated to each other, like appearance and certain skills we may have or may have not. And we have a very, very strong gender bias because this is how we're socially conditioned. So we have a picture in our mind, a certain set of traits that for us is important to be, for example, successful in a job or in business. When women leaders get feedback, very often it's conflicting. So on the one hand, they're told they're too pushy, they're too aggressive, uh, they're too bossy. But on the other hand, they're getting from the same people the advice they should be more assertive and confident in, in how they go about. So every leader, I think, has to be ambitious and determined and confident. So what's the problem? We have to do this in, in, in order to embody what it takes for a leader, regardless of gender. The problem is these qualities are not seen as stereotypical feminine traits. Uh, for example, we uh, want women expected, consciously or unconsciously, we expect them to be warm, to be nutritive, and to be sweet. So when, uh, when men show behaviors, this is taken totally differently than when women do. Women are penalized for the same kind of behavior that earns men respect. Uh, as an extreme example, there's a US study that show that at least white men, they received a boost in their perceived status after expressing anger, whereas women were seen as less competent. But even if we're not talking bad behavior, women that show behavior that's outside of their gender norm they're seen as less likable. And likability, other than for men, for women is a must. If you're not likable, you will not make it anywhere. For men, it's kind of different. You can be a jerk or a braggart, and very often this is still compatible with a career, be it in business or in politics. I'm, I'm sure we can come up with examples. When women uh, are, are, let's put it that way around, when men are taking charge, they're a boss. When women are taking charge, they're bossy. Men are seen as ambitious. Women might be seen as aggressive. He is cool. She is cold and distant. He is persuasive. She's pushy. 
On the other hand, when women are viewed as overly feminine or very feminine, they are not seen as competent managers because it doesn't fit the picture we have of leaders. They could be seen as weak or incompetent. So when women are very collaborative, they are seen as incompetent. But when they uh, push their competencies and express their competencies, they're seen as unlikable and cold. So this is really a double bind. Women are also sometimes called emotional. Usually, you don't call in business lead men emotional. And usually, this emotional is not meant in the sense of compassionate or considerate, but in the sense of bitchy, hypersensitive, irrational, or difficult. Women are best received, and it doesn't just apply for women leaders, but generally for women in business, when they communicate precisely, concisely, clearly, confidently, yet warm. But wait a minute. Isn't that true also for men? Does this just apply to women? So although we have the stereotypical picture of a forceful male leader, especially the younger generation, they don't appreciate authoritative leadership styles anymore. And with the shortage of specialists we're beginning to see, it's suddenly the employees who have much more power in who the leader should be and who they want to work for. So while for decades and centuries, leaders picked leaders according to their fit, now certainly it's the employees who are making the call. And they want leaders who are confident, who are competent, who are decisive, yet at the same time, who are kind, empathetic, and supportive, regardless of gender. So this line that has been there for women for quite a while, that where we tiptoed around, is now starting to materialize also for men. Although, to a lesser extent. Because for men, there still is a lot more leeway to be both likable and be tough at the same time. So I think we all agree, at least in this room, that it doesn't make a difference if you're a man or a woman, if you're an effective leader. However, we all have underlying beliefs. And since we have gender norms, these beliefs influence how we see leadership performance and potential in men versus women. If we ex expect differences, we will apply different standards. So for companies, it is very important to tackle this. Otherwise, they will not have a large enough talent pool of potential leaders that people would want to work for. But what can we do ourselves as women? Women use stereotypes to set their own expectations, the expectations they have for themselves and to guide their behavior. Too often, it doesn't even need anyone else to tell someone, and to tell a woman especially, that you can't do this or that. We limit ourselves. One example is studies on schoolgirls uh, that were doing better than their uh, male uh, classmates in math cal in calculations. Although they knew they had good grades, they thought about themselves that they were less apt in mathematics than the average of the class. So this had nothing to do with real world data, just with imagination and your own concept. Women are also much more prone to let an initial setback stop them from ambition towards a career goal. And they think a lot more about how they're perceived and how they're supposed to act in a certain situation. Although I think it's enormously valuable to be self-reflective, it shouldn't be to a point where we impede ourselves from getting ahead and from pursuing our goals. I'll give you an example. I talked to a couple of um, journalists and asked them why it is that there are so few interviews with women. And they all gave me the exact same answer. If they have, they have to ask 10 women 
to get one woman to consent to give an interview. The others will uh, either suggest somebody who's even more of an expert on the issue. They will have to ask someone first if it's okay if they gave the interview or they don't have time. On the other hand, when they ask three men for an interview, on average, they'll end up with five saying yes. It always makes me very, very sad when I meet a talented woman who is reluctant to pursue a certain career goal because it might be a hassle and it's not sure if she will be successful. Well, yes, if you compete for something, you might get it or not or something in between. Um, I give you a story on that. It was about seven years ago, a few days before Christmas, I got a call. And I was asked if I wanted to become vice director of research here at the medical university. I had about two days to decide. And uh, if the board of directors would give me the job, I would have to start within a few weeks. And the first thing that came to my mind was my pre-predecessor, who I had met in the past for a couple of occasions, not very often. But every time I met her, I was super, super impressed. And by the time when it was up for my decision, she was already a, a top industry manager. And so I thought, is this really my league? And then I thought about other people in similar positions I'd come across over the years. And to say it nicely, there were some that didn't impress me quite so much. So I thought, well, I guess I can do this. After all, I was born under a lucky star, and I was raised by my family that I work hard, that I trust in my ability. And life had taught me that when taking decisions, I should choose love, not fear. So when in doubt, yeah, I'd rather say yes. But then again, it really was not the right time in my life. I had a two-year-old son, and my husband at that time was hospitalized with cancer. I had a full-time job as a manager of a research institute, but vice rector, I mean, this is something else. And then I thought to myself, how can I complain that all of those positions are always taken by old white men if I, like so many other young women, when asked, turn it down, because it doesn't sneakily fit into my life at the moment. I took the chance, I got the job, and I love it to this very day. And what I also love is this picture you can see here. It's by a talented Austrian uh, painter. Her name is Michaela Schwarzweismann. And uh, for me, it conveys three main messages. Message number one is, it takes a few women to take the lead to go up in front, and a lot will follow. And the more are taking the lead, the easier it will be for others to follow their example and find their own way. Number two, all of these women are attractive and beautiful their own way. They are very feminine. Michaela Schwarzweismann uh, studied art at the most prestigious colleges in Vienna and in London. She was also working as a professional model in Paris. People always open their eye and say, hmm, how does this go together? Why does it come as such a surprise when an attractive woman has other talents too, like being artistic, being smart, or even some masculine talents they have? I'll also give you an example here. About four weeks ago, I was at a business networking event, and I was introduced to a retired CEO. And when he learned that I was vice rector, he was somewhat between surprised and impressed, and he said with delight, no wonder, this is because you're so beautiful. I was slightly irritated, and then I said, um, I hope not. I'm sure it's because I'm really good at what I do. And he went, ah, maybe also. Number three, and this is most noticeably, it's not the slide is not upside down. This is the way the painting was made and how it's supposed to be. And what this tells us is that when you're a woman, 
No matter how much you try to fit a certain picture, you'll always be awry. There will be something wrong. You might be too loud or too quiet, too confident or too conscious, too weak or too strong, too proud or too modest, too timid, too bold. You can be too sexy or too prudent, too pretty, not pretty enough. You might be too tall, too short, too big, too, too skinny, too modest, too emotional, too cold, too masculine, too feminine. So when it really doesn't matter and you always be awry, why bother so much and not just be the way you are? I don't think that it is a good idea to just be an ignorant chatterbox or a totally unreflected braggart. This will lead no one nowhere, whether a woman or a man. What it really is about is not putting your light under the bushel. For women, it is important to know what they can do and what they can't and to work for on themselves. Um, you have your strengths, you have your weaknesses. Everyone has. The important thing about being successful is that it doesn't come as a chance. It doesn't come for free for no one, not for men and not for women. I'm not telling you a secret, 80% of success is showing up. And we should do so by trying, because if we don't try and stay ourselves at the same time and not imitate men or anyone else, it will not change for the better. So I'm asking you to have a reflective look on where your strengths are and where your potential is. And to never, never, ever let labels hold you down. Be yourself, be your best self, and just shine. Thank you.